On one of my last videos, I talked about the Cubase signal flow. I received a bunch of questions and comments, and one of those goes like this. Hello, Chris. Always enjoy your videos. One thing you overlooked, however, was the post fader inserts. Uh, and yes, and I did that on purpose. I wanted to make this video as simple as possible, where I explain a more basic overview of the signal flow of the channel in Cubase. Um, so I received more than one comment regarding post inserts and uh, post pre uh, fader sends and so on. So I decided to make this uh, extra and follow up video to my first uh, video. And this time around, I'm gonna dive way deeper uh, and give you an advanced overview of the signal flow of the channel in Cubase. Hey, what's up, my friend? The Chris Adam here from Mixdown Online. Now let's jump right in Cubase and check this out together. Now, if you didn't watch my more basic overview of the signal flow in Cubase, uh, go watch this video first and then come back to this one because uh, there's some stuff that I mentioned that I showed you on the other video that I'm not gonna go back into on this one. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna go straight uh, on the um, uh, on the main project window. We're gonna look at this uh, audio event here. Now, like I said on the previous video, um, working straight from the audio event is gonna influence uh, the level and you know what you are sending on the channel. So it's gonna affect that signal flow going through your audio channel. Uh, so whether you're working with the clip gain or you're doing clip gain automation with the pen tool, uh, or even if you um, you decide to go with offline, the direct offline processing, uh, let's say you want to insert a compressor straight on that audio event, uh, you, you'll see, you'll see now that my compressor is inserted as a direct offline processing uh, plugin, uh, you see the waveform changing as I change the parameters on my compressor. Okay, so that affects the signal itself. Okay, now that you understand that, let's go straight into the mix console. And I'm gonna open once again the channel settings window of that channel, uh, which, uh, which is a guitar solo uh, take. I'm gonna just... Uh, Put that in solo. Okay, now on this one, I'm just gonna show you a few things here. Now the next stop from this point is the pre-section. I explained that to you on the other video. So again, if you didn't watch that first video, go back and watch the video and then come back to watch this one. Now, if we look at the insert section, um, I added the capitator on this one, which is a saturation plugin. Um, and uh, I'm gonna focus uh, on the uh, level of saturation and input level that I'm getting in this uh, uh, straight in this plugin. So let's have a listen. Okay, so let's add just a bit more of a drive. Okay, so now we're getting a, like a lot of uh, gain in the plugin, and this is good for this example. Now, we see that green line here, and I actually received a question about uh, uh, what the heck is that green line all about? Now, this is the pre or post position line, okay, uh, where you determine uh, if a plugin is in pre fader position or post fader position. Now, by default, when we usually mix for 99% of the time, we always add plugins like inserted plugins in pre fader position. Okay, so meaning that if I bring my fader level down, you know, everything will follow. The fader will not determine the amount of signal going into these plugins, okay? Um, but if I bring that plugin or any other plugin straight under like under that line, now that plugin is in post fader position. Okay, now it's the opposite. Now, if I bring down my fader, the fader of that channel, that will also influence the level going into this particular plugin. Not the pre-fader plugins, but only that post-fader plugin, or if you have more than one, okay? Uh, so let's have a quick listen and look actually at, just focus on the input level going into this plugin that now is in post-fader position. Okay, now, right now, if I bring that back to pre, I'm getting the same amount of input. Okay, that's because my fader is at unity point. It's at zero, so it's the same signal, same amount of signal going into the plugin. Now, if I bring down my fader.
Look at that VU meter on top. I'm gonna bring it, gonna bring it back up. Okay, so when I bring my fader down, it brings uh, the, sid the input signal down also. Okay, if I bring it back to pre-fader position, and I bring down the fader level, the entire signal goes down and the amount of saturation generated by the plugin stays the same. Okay, so uh, this is how pre and post fader inserts work like. Uh, now, in reality, when we mix, like I said, 99% of the time, you don't have to worry about that whatsoever. We mix with pre fader inserts. Okay, so that's why it's there by default. That's why that green line is usually way at the bottom. So you just don't even think about it. You work with your insert plugins in pre-fader position. Now, there's some very rare situation where the, uh, the use of a post-fader plugin can be useful. And I actually made one full video talking about one situation where I used a post fader position in a mastering session. Okay, so if you wanna watch this video, I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below or right here on top. Okay, now, once we understand that concept, let's go and check out the channel strip. Okay, now the channel strip again can go from pre-insert position to post-insert position. Okay, so that is gonna influence the amount of signal going into the inserts, depending on uh, if my channel strip goes before the inserts or after the inserts. Uh, but when I bring my plugin to post fader position, the signal coming out of the decapitator plugin in post fader position is not going to go in the channel strip, even if the channel strip is in post insert position. Okay. All right. So I'm going to activate this uh, plug. I'm going to bring back the capitator on at pre insert position. And this is the amount of gain reduction that I'm getting. Almost five, six dBs of gain reduction. If I bring the capitator in post fader position, I'm not getting as much gain reduction. Okay, I'm getting the same gain reduction as if my channel strip was pre-insert. Okay, so again, if I bring that back to post insert, bring the capitator down to post fader position, click on play, I'm not gonna get as much gain reduction even if I bring it to pre-insert position. Okay, so again, that means that post fader plugins will not go into the channel strip, even if the channel strip is set up to post-insert position. All right, so I hope this is not too confusing, uh, but let's go even deeper, okay? Okay, now I'm going to go down to the sends. Now, the sends by default are going to be set up to post fader position, because by default, what you want, uh, you want the fader level uh, to also bring down the amount of signal going into the sends, or basically uh, the signal send to your effects channels, like a delay. Okay, so now if I bring down the fader of the channel, it's also gonna bring down the amount of signal going into my delay channel that is right here. Okay, if I bring back up the channel, now I'm getting signal back into this uh, delay FX channel. If I bring this uh, uh, send uh, to uh, pre-fader send instead, I'm just going to click on that small icon. Now my level is turned blue. That means that the uh, level is going pre-fader. So it's a pre-fader send. Uh, that means also that, you know, if I bring down the fader of the channel, listen to what's going to happen. I'm going to be left with the effect itself, okay? Because I'm not changing the amount of signal going into my effects channel, which is that delay, 
Okay, so hope you still follow me here. Now, again, most of the time when we work with delay and reverbs, we are gonna work in post fader position as far as the send level goes. So this way, when we bring down the, the fader level of the channel, it also gonna bring down the uh, delay or reverb you're sending your signal into which is way more practical, okay? Uh, but there's, again, some uh, like common mixing situation where uh, the use of a pre-fader send is gonna be very useful. And I'm gonna link uh, that video or those videos down below if you wanna watch them, okay? And that has to do with parallel compression and other types of uh, parallel processing. But now to complicate things even more, uh, let's bring back our decapitator, bring that back to pre-insert, okay? Pre-insert position. So I have some saturation going on and that saturation is also going into the delay. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna monitor the delay on its own, okay, by clicking on this listen uh, function here. Now I set that up this way so I can hear that uh, channel by itself uh, without the direct signal. If you wanna know my technique to how I set that up in Cubase using the control room, again, I'm gonna leave the link below because I already made a video on that which can be very useful when mixing. All right, so this is the, re the delay by itself, and that is my saturation plugin from the insert the audio signal. So if I bring my decapitator to post fader position, it's not gonna change if I bring the drive down. Now, even if my plugin is set up to a post fader position, my signal is still gonna be sent to the, um, uh, the delay since my delay is also set up to a post position send effect. But if I bring that send level to pre-fader send, listen to what happens. Nothing. So a post-fader insert plugin is gonna bypass a pre-fader send signal. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, we're just geeking up here. And I hope this is not too confusing. But the good news is what you need to remember when it comes to pre or post fader inserts is that for 99% of the time, you are gonna work with pre fader inserts. You know, that's it. So that green line is almost never gonna be used. There's some exceptions. Again, I linked a video down below where that technique can be useful. And for sense, what you need to know is that by default for when working with delays and reverbs, you're gonna work in post fader send, which is what is uh, set up by default in Cubase anyways. And again, there's some mixing situation where working with a pre fader send can be useful. Again, I have some videos linked down below if you wanna watch those. So when you think of it, the fader of a channel has a powerful role. So it actually brings up and down the amount of signal coming out of a channel, that is his main role. But on top of that, uh, depending on the pre or post the fader position of the sands and the insert, it can also level out the amount of signal going into the sands or the amount of signal going into a plugin if the plugin is set up to a post insert plugin. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. I hope that was not too complicated. So if you have any questions or comments, you can leave everything down below. Until next time, take care and see you.